It's better, 15 months. Ah. Uh, porque injertos tiene más de, de uh, uh, sangre, de, de, de como, uh, como sí, vascular, más vascular después de tiempo. Eso es lo mismo que un uh, um, uh, injerto de piel, de piel, piel. De piel. Sí. ¿Comprende? Esa es filosofía. No es, no sé, es práctico o no. Okay, thank you. Gracias. So this is, just to remind you, it's volume in most cases, unless you gain weight. If you've gained a lot of weight, then you're going to say, well, do the, does a person need fat? No, not necessarily, because they look fat, you know? So patient communication is so important. I describe to them that if you are uh, a, uh, a grape in youth, well, and then you become a raisin because it, you lose volume. Why pull and stretch that raisin into a pea? Because they don't look the same. Inflate it back to a grape. So just a way of communicating. Is this good? A lot of fat? No. It's ugly. Look at some of the celebrities in the United States at least I know. It just looks ugly. And my patients get scared when they say put fat in the face. It's ugly. You have to do beautiful work, like everything. So remember, fat loss over time. Don't put too much in. Always go less. Always go less. So this is the, the just to recap the aging process, remember that that oval at 30 is really what we're shooting for if, I, if we can. Cheeks, let's talk about the cheeks. Where do we put it? I'll tell, talk about numbers in a second. I'll talk to you about technique and we'll show video. So just wait, it'll come. So the cheek, I look at the cheek as an anterior cheek where the malar ligament is, okay? Anterior, and then here, sobre el hueso, the lateral, en esta parte, okay? Dos partes de, de mejilla, dos partes de mejilla. Anterior es más femenina, Lateral es más masculino. Yeah. <laughs> yo quiero hablar, pero no, you know. I don't know, say a lot of words. Bubble, okay, is divided into several areas. We'll talk about that. It's so important to understand the buckle because people put too much fat in the cheeks and they don't think of transitions. Chin. So forget the fold, forget the jowl. The bone of the front chin is not the mental sulcus. No es la línea, pero hueso todo de mentón. Oval. Oval? Lo mismo palabra. Bueno. Okay. Buckle. The buckle, to me, is divided into three areas when you think about it. Central, here. The area below the bone. So when you see someone front on, you see the bone edge. Look at it come down. That little edge is so important to fill. I call that the back fill. Back here. And then, much older, bad, bad teeth, bad teeth cleaning. You lose it here, the medial area. So think about the buccal area in three areas, okay? Here's a lady that has loss in most of those areas. If I just fill her cheek, she will not look good. Her chin, cheek, brows, eyes are all important. This area, this woman is too heavy. Here, no fat in the buckle, zero, zero, okay? And she has two, well, we'll talk about the eyes in a moment, hold on. This, area, this lady, too full. Again, no, cheek, no fat in the buckle. Let's talk about the eyes. Because if you look at the eyes, she had a little bit of eyelid skin removal and some laser and some Botox, but it's volume. It's emptiness. This is emptiness all the way around. Okay? This lady, same thing. If you look at her, but no skin removal, no fat removal, just needs Fat, just added fat, okay? Otherwise, she will look too empty. 
Oh, okay, this lady here, the same lady you saw, this is a, I took the bag out, transconjunctival, took some skin away, peel, and added fat. So sometimes you take a little away, sometimes you add, sometimes you add only, sometimes you do, you add, but I rarely just take away, rarely just take away. This lady already had a brow lift, eyelid surgery. She looks empty. So I put it back in, brought the brow lower, which is crazy, right? I don't think so. Eye frame. Let's talk more in detail. Okay, we'll give you numbers and everything in a second. I'm still teaching you how to see strategy now. So let's break it down. The inner tear trough, okay? And that area, I put some fat on average about 1.5 cc's. The outer tear trough here, all right, I sort of arbitrarily divide it. Another 1.5 cc's, okay? Then just that little depression, the nasal jugal groove, that area, I fill a little bit more, half cc or so. Then the other thing is important is when you fill the rim, you're going to see a little dip here. You need to go separately and fill that little canthus. And I put another half cc in there. Again, I'll show you the technique in a moment. The lateral brow is, we think it sags, but it's empty. We need to fill it. So I fill that brow, okay? And then if you look at what's called an A-frame deformity, a lot of times we take fat out and you have this notch. Look for the notch. Fill the notch if you need to. And then I fill the whole thing, just back and forth I fill it. And that whole brow needs to be filled, okay, in most cases. And then recently I've been really looking at even subtle transitions. The fewer transitions on the eye, the better. So these little areas are important. And that's I put in a very little amount. So here's a video of my describing how I did do this, okay? I'm sorry, I may speak fast in this video. Okay, um, let's talk about harvesting, how to do the harvesting. I'm going to show a video of this, so if you, don't understand, if you don't understand everything I say, don't worry. The key with this, when you harvest, is hand harvesting so you don't damage the fat. When you're working on the inner thigh, you really, really want to make sure you puncture through. If you guys don't do liposuction, you probably do, but if you don't, you need to puncture through a, a plane to harvest with. So I harvest principally from the belly and the, how many people do liposuction here? Okay, everyone. So you know what, I, I don't need to show you this harvesting. Do you want to see the harvesting video? No. Skip it. All right, great. What's the size of the cannula? Um, it's just, I use a tulip harvesting cannula, so it's pretty easy. It's, a, it's whatever, you know, you can use almost any size cannula, it'll be fine. Um, processing, does everyone want to know, every, does everyone want to know how to process it? Or no, does everyone know how to process it? Do I, people want to hear that? Who wants to hear pro? You want to see it? How about we just go to the video? I'll, instead of describing it, I'll just go to the video. Okay, I'm going to do this twice. Once I'm going to explain it using photos, then I'm going to explain it with a video. So I think it's going to become clear. How, many, how much do you put in, where do you put it? The video is much clearer. But I will try to explain it first. I always have a photo of the patient in the operating room because you don't remember when you're injecting how it's changing. So I pre-measure when they're in the, you saw that video, I pre-think how much am I going to put in each area and I memorize the face. I use this as a guide and third I use a little feedback of how I see the face change. But this is unreliable, especially if you're using local because if you put a lot of local in you can't tell what's going on. I use tulip cannulas. I don't have a financial affiliation with them. I think they're very elegant and they work well. The best way to understand depth, everyone asks, how deep do you go? It's a feeling and it's more than seeing. I will explain as I go through this how deep in each level, okay? Because I know that's a very important concern. Basically, <coughs> Just to throw up a slide here. Um, let's just talk a little bit about Africare. 
there really is very little aftercare. I don't wear, I don't put dressings on the face. You, you can if you want to. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, the one thing I, I want to just go through with you, the top five complaints that patients give me, and so that if you don't do a lot of fat grafting, you will feel comfortable. Number one, my face feels hard, firm, normal. It will soften after two or three weeks. Number two, I can't smile because it, it's tight, normal. That goes away. Number three, my lips look too thin, my lines look worse. Normal, that softens. Number four, I got some cotton balls in my mouth. It feels like bumps. That will soften out. Number five, one side looks bigger or more swollen. Normal. All those things are usually, when I, I usually tell my patients, these are the things you're going to ask me. And they don't, they don't ask me. So those are things in case you have them, don't panic. It's normal. Okay. That's all I have to say on fat grafting. Uh, should I take questions? BRP. Yeah, uh -huh. yes. Okay. Okay. So, right now, we're at a new frontier of understanding regenerative medicine, PRP, stem cells, all these things. I think, my opinion, I don't like a face that's too full. I get very consistent results with my fat. Not perfect, but consistent. So I know if I put this much in, I get this result in a year. If I add PRP, if I add other things to it, I'm afraid it's going to be too good. Okay? Now someone that has bad, you know, 2% of my patients is not good take, I have to put more, they probably need some PRP or something. So I'm hesitant to use other things in, in there to mix because I don't want the fat to be too big. You graft nose? With fat? With fat? I, I'll put some in, but it, honestly, it's not as reliable because the nose is, a, is so focused on millimeters. It, you know, the cheek is just off by one or two millimeters. Who cares? If the nose is off by one or two millimeters, it's a, it's a graft. You, it may not be, re, it's, I have not had, I have had some decent results if I cover in an inverted V deformity or exposed bone, that's good. If you just want to cover, scar down previous rhinoplasty and see if you have some results, yes. But if you're trying to reliably augment a virgin nose, I wouldn't use fat. 